structure and execution. Look along the wall to our right. You see that white writing that reads entry to the traitor's gate? You see there's a bricked off entrance below it. That is where we delivered our traitors. That was known as London's very first one-way street. When you went through there, you were not coming back out again. Three queens of England lost their lives going through the traitor's gate. Please do not worry though. Uh, now the tower is home to the crown jewels. They're guarded by the British Army, the Yeomen of the Guard. We call them the Beef Eaters. Ah, good tip for you all. If you visit the Tower of London, which everyone should do at least once in their lifetime, by the way. I went very recently with my sister-in-law. She was over from the States. Uh, we found out when we went, every hour on the hour in the Tower, the Beef Eaters will give you a free tour of the building. And it's genuinely one of the best tours I've ever taken in my life. Those guys know everything. They really put me to shame. Um, the only thing I would ask, um, if you do take a free tour with them, as a fellow tour guide, please tip them, because they don't get paid to do those tours. They just do that because they live there, and they love it. And I hope they love it. At least it would be a bit sad if they didn't. Yeah, that would be lovely. Uh, the tallest building in Western Europe is on our left-hand side here. That's the Shard. I won't talk about it too much, I'm sure you noticed it. Um, it's 1,016 feet, that is as tall as aviation law will allow it to be. You have to go to Moscow to find anything taller. And it's mainly offices, which is a bit sad. They do have um, shops and a hotel and a bar and a paid viewing platform. And there are even 10 apartments at the top. Apartments that can be yours for the very reasonable price of 50 million pounds. You don't even get a garden. They won't let you open a window up there. It's complete madness. Now, please do me a favor. Do not pay to go in the shard. Go up the building on our right-hand side instead. This uh, skyscraper that's wider at the top, we call that the walkie-talkie for obvious reasons. I'll tell you why I like it so much. Uh, look at the very top of the walkie-talkie. You should see a line of people looking back down at you. They are up there because there is a sky garden up there, which is completely free to visit. You just have to book in advance. It's a gorgeous garden. They've got a great bar up there, actually, and the views are spectacular. I would say better than the views from the Shard, because you can actually see the Shard from it, and it's free. Oh, and another good tip for you all, they do same-day cancellations in the sky garden. So if you are in London for a few days, it is genuinely worth just showing up and seeing if they've got space for you. It's about, I'd say about 50%, maybe a bit less on the weekend, but I've been up there twice now on a same day cancellation and it's brilliant. And it's free. I have another blink and you'll miss it moment just before we hit London Bridge. Again, it's on our right, just between these concrete buildings coming up. In the gap, you are searching for a golden orb that's standing on top of a column. Now, this is Christopher Wren's famous monument to the Great Fire of London. He built it so that Londoners would have a good place to watch their city regrow after the Great Fire in 1666, which wiped out about 80% of the city. People still go up there to enjoy the views. You'll see there's a little black balcony at the top. I have always wanted to climb the monument, but there are 311 steps and there is no lift, so if you decide to do it, uh, brace yourselves. Apparently, they'll give you a certificate if you make it up and down in one piece. It's only about five pounds. Anyway, I put it on my bucket list, so it's something I will get out of the way one day. When I'm feeling less lazy. Um, back through London Bridge now, if you did not believe me the first time round. I'm going to stick to the subject of bridges for a bit, but I can only apologise for this uh, next one coming up. That's Cannon Street Railway Bridge. It's the ugliest bridge in London. I have nothing nice or interesting to say about it. I have tried, I've researched, and it was designed by British Rail, that's the best I could come up with. I don't think they were going for aesthetics. Uh, it does run into a nice station, Cannon Street Station on our right here. Oh, what I did find out, there's a luxury spa underneath the bridge to our right here, so you occasionally get naked people in those windows just staring at us, which is slightly disconcerting. <laughs> but that's something. So do the quick look to the right to see if today's one of those days. I think we're safe, but I'll move on just in case. I don't particularly like dwelling on this ugly bridge here when I can talk about the next bridge along. This uh, green and gold bridge coming up, Southwark Bridge, that is my favourite bridge in London. I think it's the prettiest bridge in London. Built in 1921, so pure Art Deco style. Prettiest bridge with the saddest nickname though. Yeah, we call Southwark Bridge the Lonely Bridge because it gets the least amount of traffic and footfall of any of the bridges in central London. Uh, there are no main roads attached to it, no points of interest. It is very hard to find and no one ever has any reason to be up there. If you can see anyone on Southwark Bridge right now, they're lost. I've lived in London all my life and I've still never set foot on that bridge. I would not know where to look for it. It is still my favourite though. It lights up green and purple underneath at night, so it's really, really pretty. 
Uh, once we're through the Lonely Bridge, more lovely views of the Globe Theatre on our left. Behind the Globe, on the back side, there's a massive building with a 325 foot chimney. Now that is the Tate Modern Art Gallery. It used to be the Bankside Power Station, but it was producing too much pollution, so we reopened it as a modern art gallery to celebrate the millennium. And we've got a world-class collection in there now from 1900. And I have had this argument with so many people, but personally, that even if you hate modern art, a lot of people do, I would always recommend a visit to the Tate. It's still free to get in there. You don't hear that word enough in London, I don't think. And uh, plus, and this totally shows where my priorities lie, you see there's a little balcony up there with some tables and chairs on it. That is attached to one of the best cocktail bars in London. It's called Terrace. It is absolutely delicious. So you can go in there for free, skip the art, and go straight to the booth if you like. Is what I generally do. Uh, we are going back through the Wobbly Bridge again now, which has had a stellar acting career, by the way. This bridge was in Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. <laughs> 